Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. Elliot Lewis in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents a story of revenge, the desperate effort of a murderer to destroy the man who had committed him to prison. The story is called Concerto for Killer and Eyewitnesses. Our star, the producer-director of Suspense, Mr. Elliot Lewis. Hello, Harlow. Uh, goodbye, Hap. Goodbye. Why, sure, Hap. This is our last show till fall. The last chance to talk about that great Autolite Stay Full, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Well, it's a great battery, Harlow, and just a battery to make every summer trip happier than ever. Why, Hap, the Autolite Stay Full is a natural for every season of the year. It has fiberglass retaining mats protecting every positive plate to reduce shedding and flaking. And it gives longer life, as proved by tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. The Autolite Stay Full is the battery for me, Harlow. So, friends, see your neighborhood Autolite battery dealer soon. He services all makes of batteries, and when replacements are needed, he has an Autolite Stay Full for your car. To quickly find his location, just call Western Union by number... And ask for Operator 25. That's me, and I'll gladly tell you the location of your nearest Autolite battery dealer. Where you can get an Autolite Stay Full, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, with the performance of Mr. Elliot Lewis, Autolite presents transcribed Concerto for Killer and Eyewitnesses, hoping once again to keep you in... Suspense. My name's Jesse Crandall, Detective Sergeant, Central Division, Chicago Police Department. I was assigned to a special detail along with Detective Sergeant Abe Delaney on the first day of this week. Our duty was to escort prisoner Edward Sitko to the state penitentiary at Joliet, where he was to await execution. Our train left the main terminal at five in the afternoon. We all took prescribed precautions. The prisoner was securely handcuffed to both of us. He was wearing county jail-issue clothing. No hat. You guys have to walk me through the station? For a fellow who doesn't care who he kills, you're pretty touchy, Sitko. I got all the opinions I want in the judge copy. You're just supposed to see I get some. All right, that's enough, Sitko. We'll see that you get there, Eddie boy, all safe and sound and ready for the chair. Tell us, punk, to shut up. Tell him to shut up. I'm the last copper you'll ever call a punk, Sitko. Now keep looking tight. Tie off him, Delaney. Will you? Oh, sure, Jesse, sure. Sitko. Yeah. How come you're so stupid, Sitko? How come you trusted Dallas Kenyon when nobody else did? I never trusted anybody. Ever. If you didn't trust him, Sitko, how come he knew who you killed, where you killed, when you did it? Car 64, compartment A. This car, sir, second door to the right. Watch your steps, sir. Thank you. Come on. Hey, uh, here it is. A14. <laughs> the taxpayers wanted to be sure you got only the best. Did your boy Kenyon ever treat you... Shut up about Kenyon. Look, Eddie, it's too late to be tough. Yeah, Eddie. You should have been tough with Dallas Kenyon instead of that two-bit hood he sent you out after. You killed the wrong guy, Eddie. I'm not dead yet. Maybe I'll still get the right one. (laughs) Gonna write him a poison pen letter? It's too late, Sitko. You killed a man. Now you're gonna pay for it. Being served in a dining car. Dinner now being served in a dining car. Place call for dinner. Place call for dinner. Place call for dinner. Oh, uh, I'll get a bite now. Jesse, key. No. Yeah. Here you are. Thanks. Oh, uh, 
want me to bring you back a newspaper, Sitko? Nothing in them I want to read. First guy I ever took up to the death cell who didn't want to read his own publicity. Sergeant Delaney was in the dining car as we pulled out into the outer yards. That's when the train lurched forward. I went off balance for a moment. Sitko threw his weight on me and we crashed to the floor. He brought his knee up into my face. One for you. I was momentarily stunned. He went through my pockets, found the keys, and unlocked the handcuffs. Sergeant Delaney returned at that moment. Sitko slammed against the door, locking it. And then he struck me across the temple with the handcuffs. That's one for you, friend! Open up! Open up, Roger! Before I lost consciousness, I saw Eddie Sitko open the train window and jump. <laughs> what he'd never been able to do for himself. It was Angela's time. Six o'clock when I heard him on the stairway outside my door. Yeah? Let me in. What are you doing here? It's a matter that you like to see me. First time in my life I've been glad the trains run through this lousy, dirty neighborhood. No, I don't understand. I... Dallas I... Kenyon. He's waiting for me. He don't know it, but he's waiting. And I'm going to be there. I need some clothes, money, a gun. Kenyon? Oh, Kenyon. You're going to kill again. Where are my clothes? Get out of here, Eddie. What? Get out. I got nothing of yours. I gave all your things to the neighbors. To the boys in the block. I thought they'd need some warm clothes to wear. They fought over them. And they tore them to shreds. They wanted souvenirs. They're growing up like you because they think you're a man. They think you're somebody. You who cheated and robbed and murdered. What do you mean by that? You ruin everything you touch. You shut up! <laughs> Come on, give me some money. Give me some money. I got nothing. Nothing. Go away. Leave me alone. Go away, huh? I walk out that door and you yell, Copper, huh? Why don't you kill me then, Eddie? Come on, kill me. No. Because you already killed me, Eddie. Fifteen years ago. Fifteen years I've operated a legitimate business. Fifteen years and nothing like this has ever happened to me. It's very frightening that such a thing should occur in a large city like Chicago. Very frightening. I read the newspapers and I know all about Eddie Sisko. I read about his threats against this man, Dallas Kenyon, and all that, but I never thought that I, George Bartlett, would ever meet the man. What? Back inside. Well, it's 6.30. Time to close. I said back inside. I'm warning you, don't yell. Don't do anything. Yeah, I, I don't want to yell. What do I want to yell and get killed for? Where are your guns? Where are your guns? The guns? Every hot shop has guns. Where are they? A uh, uh, gun? Oh, what's a fellow sticking up a store? Uh, oh, want... Where are your guns? Uh, uh, Sitko. Eddie Sitko. I, I, I saw your pictures in the paper. Oh, shut up. Uh, over, over, over there in the case. Yeah, uh, that case. All the guns you want. All of them. Uh, anything here is it, yours. Take all of it, but uh, please leave me alone. Please let me alone. Cartridges? Uh, uh, on your right. On your right. Uh, second draw. <laughs> It's all yours. Please, just let me alone. i got to change clothes. On the rack. On the rack, yes. You can see I'm trying to help you. Can't you see that? Yeah, this'll do. Yes, it'll fit nice. It's nice in the shoulders. I know it'll fit. Pull those shades. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You expecting anybody? Uh friend of mine, Albert Hennessy. He runs the barber shop two doors down. We, we we have beer sometimes after work. But if he comes, I'll send him away. I want to help you. 
Punished? I, I, I hate to see anybody get a raw deal. And that man you talked about during your trial, that Dallas Canyon, he gave you a bad deal. I, I, I'm sure he gave you a bad deal. Did you hear me? I, I said I hate to see anybody get a raw deal. And that Dallas Canyon, he... Yeah, this suit'll do. It, it fits perfectly. Like it was made just for you. I, I helped you, didn't I? I believe in giving a man a chance. I'm a little man. I... I can't hurt you. Kenyon, he, he's the one you want. That's right, yes. There's, you need money. Here, take it. Take it, all of it. Anything. Please, just take it. You might need it if you have far to go, and I... Oh, my God. You... You can trust me. Please, Mr. Sitko. You... I don't trust. No, no, no. No, I'm a grown man. Please, please don't beat me up. It's humiliating for a grown man to cry. Just... Don't beat me up. Please don't. Everybody ought to give a little man a break. I'll give you a break, little man. No, please, please, no, 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 I... You just got your break. Kenny Tate, licensed operator, city of Chicago. You'll see a front and side of me right by the meter. I never go under and I never go over. And I never make wrong change. I never roll drunks. It's a job. It helps you to learn people. That's what I said, learn people. You can tell a lot by the way a woman lights a cigarette or a man reaches to pay his fare. I was just cruising when I saw Eddie Sitko. I didn't know it was him at first. Right ahead. I'll tell you when to turn. Right. It's one night, isn't it? Want the radio on? No. Turn right, next corner. Yeah, sure. Come on, get this going faster. <laughs> yeah, not tonight. I've never seen so many cops floating around. Never mind the tickets. Never mind it. Hey, who'll pay for them? I'll pay. Let's get moving. Yeah, that's what they all say. Like just last I week... Said I said I'd pay a... for them. Move. Yeah, trying to make the fights? What? I said trying to make the fights. Fights? Yeah, I want to make the fights. Oh, well then. You'll just make it. Start at 8.30. Turn here. Huh? Turn here. Thought you wanted to go to the fights. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll circle back on the next corner. It won't cost you nothing. I'll pull down the flag. Hey, would you look at that? Second squad car in a block. Wonder what's up. Wonder if they're looking for somebody. What are you stopping for? The signal, mister, it's red. Can't make a right turn in a downtown district against the stop signal. It says go. Start fast. What are you doing? Don't turn left. Please, please, Eddie, sit down in my car. Are you lousy? Bringing you Mr. Elliot Lewis in Concerto for Killer and Eyewitnesses. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Say, Harlow, before we go on vacation, I've got a question. All right, shoot, Hap. Does the Autolite Stayful battery really have everything? You bet it does, Hap, including fiberglass retaining mats to reduce shedding and flaking. 
and give the Autolite Stay Full longer life, as proved by tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. But doesn't the Autolite Stay Full need something, Harlow? Well, yes, it does hap. It needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Only three times a year in normal car use, Harlow? Yes, Hap, only three times a year in normal car use. So, friends, visit your nearest Autolite battery dealer. He services all makes of batteries and has an Autolite stay full for your car. To quickly learn his location, call Western Union by number... And ask for me, operator 25. I'll quickly tell you the location of your nearest Autolite battery dealer. Where you can get an Autolite stay full, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Elliot Lewis in his production of... Concerto for Killer and Eyewitnesses. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. <laughs> and next, ladies and gentlemen, number 18 in your catalog. This beautiful, mean type boss. <laughs> Put it up under the light, boys. And turn it for the folks. That's right. Now, can we start the bidding at $60? Do I hear $60? $50? Do I hear $50? All right, then. $45. Do I hear $45? I tell you, folks, it's worth your life getting anything sold here tonight. <laughs> now, look at this, Mark. Yes. Now, Can ready, I help you, officer? Anybody come in here in the last 20 10 minutes? Wow, what a lot of people. Okay. The auction is just starting. A tall man, heavy build. No, maybe he had a bullet wound. Limp, maybe. Bullet wound? Not no, no, we haven't seen anyone like that. Wrong. He said he's sitcom. Cool. He's dangerous. If you see him, notify the police. All right, I'm sorry. That will have to pass it. I take it away, boys. <laughs> Handle it easy now. Get out. Get out of my way. Is... Come on, out of my way. What? Get out of my way. Great. Great. I seen him once when he was at the Roxy and I... Oh, yeah. Well, it was just a night like any other night. I'm the elevator boy, the regular clerk's across the street dipping his bill. So I'm having myself a ball. I got a little routine that somebody's going to pay money for someday, and that's what I was doing when he walks in. Hey, the window sheet is broken and the rain is coming in. Uh, hiya. Jay Bunnell still live here? Yeah, 108. But she's not in. She's always out. I wish I could go out. These night jobs are lousy. You friend of hers? Yeah. Boy, I wish I was a friend of hers. Some dish. She a dancer? Singer. Nightclubs. Nightclubs? I like nightclubs. Not big spreads, jive joints. Most people don't like them anymore. Me? I like them. Look, I want to wait in her apartment. Wait in her apartment? Oh, gee, I don't no, know. No, she, she knows me. I'm her agent. Well, I'm not supposed to, buddy, and I haven't seen you around. Well, I've been out of town. I'm her agent. I've been booking her. Agent? Yeah? You've been booking her, huh? Hey, you handle any bands? Well, yeah, sure. Lots of bands. Take me up, huh? You know Stan Kenton? Yeah, yeah. I know him well. Yeah? Introduce me. I, I got a little act idea, yeah. see? And it... Yeah, just ask Miss Bunnell. Solid. You just made yourself a deal. It's on this floor. Come on. I mean, it's my neck if you tell anybody. Nobody, nobody. All you show business guys are jumpy. Why is that? Everybody's jumpy. They read the papers. That's what's wrong. And them read the papers and get all looped up. Me, I only read downbeat. Got no nerves. This is it. Here you are, and uh, don't forget my knockdown to Kenton. Tomorrow. Fix it up first thing tomorrow. You want me to shut that window? No. Well, okay. She said she'd be back in a few minutes. She said, Manana, manana, manana is good enough for me. <laughs> Good 
believe it's really you. Did he tell you outside? Didn't he tell you I was here? Nobody told me anything. Eddie, how? Never mind now. You're going to help me the rest of the way. That's why I came here. Eddie, you're bleeding. Take your hands off me. Eddie, you're hurt bad. I know a doctor who can help you. I'll call you. There was the phone. Eddie, I don't understand. Never expected to see me again, did you? Nobody expected to see Eddie Sitko again. He's all through, isn't that it? Good old Eddie. Wrapped up in a murder app, isn't that it, Kenny? No, Eddie, no. That isn't it at all. You're wrong. Well, I'm right about one thing. Kenyon sent me up there. Eddie, I've got to get you out of here. They'll be looking for you everywhere. They'll come here, too. Kenyon sent me there. Kenyon told the cops. That's where we're going. Going? We're going? Going where, Eddie? See Dallas Kenyon. Well, that's where they'll be waiting for you. That's the first place they'll go. But they wouldn't stop you, Kitty. You could just drive right through the gate, an old friend. Crazy. And I'm right behind you on the floor of the car. Look, Eddie, I, I hate him as much as you do. I hate him for what he did to you, but I haven't seen him or heard from him since the trial. I hate him, Eddie, but you I... you got lots of reasons to help me, huh? But don't you see it wouldn't work? They'd search the car and they'd start shooting. Please. I had lots of time to think, Kitty. Please. Well, there's wait to be set up. It's funny when I remember it. Well, we could get away. Something my ma used to say. You and me. Way back. If you forgot well, Kenyon. I used to sit around on the steps talking to My car's it. downstairs. If we started now, Eddie. The only thing I do remember besides gang fights and reform school and the way they did things. They wouldn't look for me, don't you see? They wouldn't look for me if I were to disappear. There's a line from something. It said, there's a time to live and a time to die. Eddie, please listen to me. Kenyon's time, baby. My time. He sits in his big house and lets everybody else get dirty for him. He promises big payoffs. And then he pays like he paid me off. Eddie. Just to stand in front of him and watch him be scared. Like I've been scared. I want to see him die. It's his time. Eddie, I love you. Things could be the way they once were if you forget him. Killing him won't do you any good. I love you. I love you. I love you. We could have each other again. I can get a doctor. He'll fix this. And then we can get away together, you and me. It's a big world. They don't catch everybody they're after. Hear what I'm saying, Eddie? Forget Dallas Kenyon. Forget about killing him. It's a miracle that you got away, but you are away. Don't let this destroy you, this hating him. There'd be nothing after that. We have time, darling. My darling, you and me, we have time. Baby, clear. Yes, darling. You love me. Wherever you want me to go, Eddie. You'll... You'll go anywhere with me? Yes, darling, yes. Here, my car keys. Drive around the back and I'll pack. What's wrong? You want me to leave you alone? I... I don't understand. You want me to leave you alone? You don't love me. What? You still love him. No, Eddie, no. I, I told you I haven't seen him or heard from him since the trial. Not a word. You still I... love him. You always loved him. No, Eddie. Right now you wanted me out of here so you could call and turn me in. So you could save him. You're not going to hurt him. We got rid of you when? Sure. And we'll get rid of you again. You and Kenyon. You and Kenyon. You and Kenyon. <laughs>
I was in the Kenyon home that evening in reply to an urgent call. I became alarmed when a police cordon was established, but I never dreamed that it would come to what it did. Of course, this man, Sitko, had no way of knowing that I was in the house. I don't know how he got in without being seen. I was standing on the top of the landing in front of Mr. Kenyon's room when I first heard him in the hall below. He'd entered, I imagine, through the basement. He looked about to see if anyone would interfere with him. Then he saw me. He was wounded in several places. The shoulder, chest, I believe. His face was extraordinary. A mask of pure hate. I stood and watched him as he came up. You. Where is he? Do you mean Mr. Kenyon? Which room is it? Come on, move. This is Mr. Kenyon's room. Out of my way. Come on, get out of my way. The sheet. What's the sheet covering him up for? I'm the undertaker. Mr. Kenyon died of a coronary attack an hour ago. No! 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 He lashed across the room and ripped back the sheet covering the face. Uh -huh. Then he turned and walked out of the room, the gun still in his hand. The police, meanwhile, had entered the home, and seeing them, he again became enraged and began firing. <laughs> Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Elliot Lewis, will return in just a moment. Music for Suspense is composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Concerto for Killer and Eyewitnesses was written for Suspense by Arthur Ross and E. Jack Newman and produced and transcribed by Elliot Lewis. In tonight's story, William Conrad was Jesse Crandall. Martha Wentworth was the old woman. Junius Matthews was the pawnbroker. Sidney Miller was the cab driver. Gil Stratton Jr. was the bellhop. Charlotte Lawrence played Kitty Bunnell. And Jay Novello played The Undertaker. Others in the cast were Byron Kane and Jack Crucian. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite. And here again is the star of tonight's play, Concerto for Killer and Eyewitnesses, the producer-director of Suspense, Elliot Lewis. Thank you very much, Harlow. Ladies and gentlemen, we of the Autolite family hope you enjoyed our show this evening. This is our last program of the season, but we'll be back on CBS Radio in September. We hope you'll join us. And in the meantime, we hope you'll give the Autolite family an opportunity to be of service to you. Indeed we do, Elliot. And friends, you'll find members of the Autolite family from coast to coast and throughout the world.